Okay, we're in downtown Miami, your new home. Was there a moment that stands out from the time you got here till now that really sunk in that this is the life you get to live now? Uh, probably the first time was one of our road trips. We got back at two or three in the morning and I get home and I'm like looking out my view and I'm like, this is a long way from Modesto, California. It's been amazing being here in this city. It's gorgeous um, and they've embraced me, so I love it. Now let's dive right into the journey. You go to UC Santa Barbara, play college ball at a mid-major. What made you decide to be a gaucho? Uh, it was not an easy decision at first. I wanted to go to the NBA. I wanted to play basketball at the highest level. After doing further research in the schools that were interested in me, it just seemed like it was a great fit. And I was able to come in and start and play heavy minutes and that kind of experience is invaluable. Sometimes you learn the best through doing. So I knew I needed time to work on my game and grow. You come in and make quite a splash. You're Big West Conference freshman of the year, but no stranger to adversity in your college career. Junior year, you tear your ACL. What was going through your mind when you heard those words, torn ACL? You know, it wasn't easy trying to come back and play immediately. You know, I came back around the nine month mark and didn't necessarily feel great till the full year. I knew I could still impact the game and as a competitor, I wanted to play. So I took the leap of faith and thankfully it worked out. More change of plans, more uncertainty. You also find out at the end of that season that you're gonna have a new head coach. Mm -hmm. From your face, I can tell that there is a story there. What did that do for you mentally? Uh, I mean, at that point, a, a big reason of why I'd gone to that school was because of Coach Williams. The legend, Bob the legend, Williams. The legend, Bob Williams. And I think for, for me and my teammates, you know, that were, had all been there for similar reasons, it was difficult. Um, and dealing with my injury and my aspirations and all the new coaches coming in. But after some long talks and conversations with uh, the current coach, now Pasternak, uh, you know, I decided to end up staying and continue my rehab. What in your toolbox helped you get through that period of uncertainty? Uh, I think the biggest thing for me was just controlling what I could control. You know, stressing about it wasn't going to change it. I was going to heal at the rate I healed. And, uh, you know, coach has been changed and that was what it was. So um, kind of just finding a way to make it work for me and try to make this dream a reality. So it's your senior year. 2018, you're quoted in your college newspaper Oof. in an article by Jorge Mercado okay, saying right. what's written on this piece of paper. Let's hear it. Will you read it for me? NBA is the dream, always has been, and definitely is not something I plan on giving up on now. What goes through your mind when you hear those words back? I told you so. You know, I always kind of believed in my dream and I'm thankful for those that have believed in me along the way. But despite the adversities, the dream and the goal was always the same. Started as a point guard, traditional point guard role growing up, turned into a shooter. Now you're a combo guard. Yeah. What does that evolution <laughs> look like? The evolution uh, is a little bit confusing, I think, at times, you know, especially uh, in a world that loves labels. It's hard when you're kind of a little bit of both. Doing a little bit of a juggling act has only helped me be more of a complete player. You know, knowing that they can count on me and trust in me to do my job helps me earn minutes. For a kid who doesn't see where they might fit into a team, what would your advice be to someone in that situation looking for a role on a roster? I think for me, it was definitely more looking at the situation um, and assessing it myself. Um, some of it is kind of reading the game and kind of seeing what's missing. But as a kid today, the way the game has changed, I think you have to be able to shoot. I'd say definitely work on your game in that manner. Just understand that there's multiple ways to win. To all the kids, watching you to dream of playing in the NBA, what would your advice be? To build a routine, whatever it may be. Uh, I think in my conversations with everyone I know that has been successful in any field, you know, they have a routine. I have my routine and I build on it and change it probably every summer or add or take things away. And routines are important and they help us stay consistent, especially when things aren't going well. You know, you have ups and downs in basketball and any field and careers and, uh, you know, it helps you stay as consistent and, and motivated as possible. If we boil down your story, we've got a kid from Modesto, plays mid-major college ball, goes undrafted to being the 2020 G League Most Improved Player, Olympian, Miami Heat combo guard. What are you the most proud of? I think it's hard for me not to say being an Olympian. 
representing a nation, I think, is just a different kind of experience and pride that uh, it's hard to explain or replicate. You know, that's something that I could have only dreamed of and never thought would have been a reality. And to be able to do that and represent Nigeria was incredible for me. You are living proof that there's more than one way to make it to the big leagues. And because of that, you're a game changer. Who is your game changer? Wow. Who is my game changer? I'd say my parents. I think uh, the sacrifices they've had and, and, and taken for me to be successful in my career and the support that they've given me and the examples they've set of hard work and um, integrity and discipline are very much instilled in me and have helped me become the person I am today.